Happy Tuesday to you. Thanks for joining us. I'm Marlon Bowling with you as we get ready for the daytime session of our ag commodities. And we have a few things that we'll be trading on today. One in particular is the very last for 2017, the very last crop progress and condition report that came out from USDA yesterday afternoon. We have those numbers and here to help us sort it all out. And let's go to Allendale Incorporated. We have Rich Nelson standing by right now. And uh, Rich, thank you for being on the program once again to open things up here this morning. We are looking at these USDA numbers. Let's take a closer look. Harvest progress. What I did was I put together the national numbers because for all intents and purposes, uh, USDA just uh, says almost everything is done except for maybe the cotton. Uh, in fact, the soybeans, they didn't even give an update this week. They totally eliminated soybeans thinking they were done uh, basically last week. I think last week was 96% done. So corn this week now rated at 95% complete on harvest. A week ago, 90%. The five-year average is 98%. Cotton on this final update for uh, 2017, the uh, post cotton harvest at 79% complete. The uh, total last week was 74, the average is 80. Sorghum, 95% done. That compares to 90% last week and a 96% average. And sunflowers made the list this time since uh, uh, soybeans dropped off here and the peanuts also dropped off. Uh, sunflowers, 93% complete on harvest. Last week was 88% and the five year average, 93%. So, Rich, I guess we can put these numbers to bed until next April, huh? No doubt about that here, and I'm sure to certainly look forward to that. And it does also uh, more or less uh, pass the baton now for us to watch uh, South American weather with maybe a little more interest. So, yes, uh, U.S. Uh, numbers are done here, not until the end of March of 2018. So, we'll see what happens with South America next year. There you go. You beat me to the punch. I was just going to ask you about that. So what's the trade going to focus on now? Of course, we did get the uh, uh, winter wheat condition numbers, too. And before we go any further, let's take a look at these, because that was kind of eye-opening on some of these states. In general, almost all states had a declining condition. We had Kansas uh, dropping five points in their good to excellent condition rating from a week ago, and Oklahoma went down seven points. Out in uh, the Pacific Northwest, where they've been getting all the rain, Washington did go up 12 percentage points in the good to excellent rating. They only have 1% there, poor to very poor. Colorado went down seven points to 66% good to excellent, and Montana dropped another three points. They're only 33% good to excellent. Uh, moving on, Texas dropped five points, down to 51%. Oklahoma, uh, excuse me, uh, Idaho down seven points at 55% good to excellent. Nebraska did come up three points. That was kind of... Uh, uh, off by itself there. South Dakota declined one point and Michigan down a couple of points. They're still at 70%, good to excellent. So I don't know if that's going to help support this wheat market here today or not. Tell me what the trade is going to focus on here. You know, as far as these issues on, on the crop progress, I think these, this decline was expected, so we're probably not going to see that much of a big uh, big issue for us today. Uh, now, the trade will focus on the corn side, uh, confirmation or, or rumors uh, from Reuters Newswire that China picked up about 700,000 tons of uh, of uh, U.S. corn, or mainly U.S. corn. So confirmation of those rumors from about a week and a half ago, uh, that may not really support the trade's uh, uh, pricing here too much today on corn. Instead, we might be talking about those uh, fund numbers. Uh, for instance, yesterday, yesterday afternoon had the, uh, the, the uh, release of the Commitment to Traders report there as well. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. That was uh, next on my talking point list here. <clears throat> the Commitment of Traders report that you referred to showed the funds uh, still very net short on the corn and the wheat, aren't they? Certainly right here. And as far as the corn numbers, uh, we are they did see about a, a week of buying here from Tuesday to Tuesday. Remember, these are Tuesday the 14th to Tuesday the 21st. So 20,000 contracts of corn there. That brings them up to a net short of only 210,000. So still holding a bit of a net short position on corn. Uh, as far as the bean side here, we are still a net long, but uh, not by a whole lot. Only about 20,000 contracts. And, Speaking of the wheat side, uh, that Tuesday to Tuesday comparison, a slight sale there, still holding a good net short of almost 109,000 contracts for wheat. All right, we'll see how that translates into the open on the grain. I appreciate that, Rich. We'll have you back later on this morning. Rich Nelson of Allendale Incorporated in McHenry, Illinois. Stay tuned. We'll take a look at livestock next. 